Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Come and Sing With Me. It feels like a long time since we've been, we've been here, since I've been in this room doing this. Um, uh, we have obviously had a few weeks uh, which have been different. Last week, we were having a rest week, and the week before that, I was actually back in Belfast. See, my parents had such a lovely time over there, and the, the technology didn't work particularly well for us for uh, the Come and Sing With Me session, but uh, I did record a little video and, and put that up as well. I think some of you saw that. Uh, well, I hope you're doing well. Good morning, folks, as you're uh, coming in this morning. Sharon and Elizabeth and Sylvia and Pamela. Good morning, Sally. Uh, morning, Liz. Uh, it's great to be together in this way. It's glorious, isn't it? The weather outside is just wonderful. Uh, maybe where you are, the sun is shining. The, uh, the There's been all sorts of things, I'm sure, that you've been doing over this last week. Maybe you've been seeing friends and family. Maybe you've been able to do a bit more of that. And uh, we can rejoice in in the opportunities that we have 
uh, and the freedom that we have to do a bit more at the minute and uh, hopefully safely as well. Um, it's really encouraging, isn't it? I want. Here's my question. Here's my kind of slightly silly question this morning. Are you uh, a, a a lover of the sun or are you less of a fan of the sun? I, well, do you love the sun? Uh, are you like me? Are you kind of factor 50 on, hat on, <laughs> sunglasses on, sitting in the shade, looking at a nice view, enjoying the view? Or are you out there soaking up all the rays? Uh, what are you like with the sun? Uh, I think it must be my, my complexion. It's my Irish complexion. <laughs> Just burn. <laughs> That's my issue. So uh, Carol is definitely a sun. John is a is a shade person. There we go. You know, it's, it, it is actually nice sitting in the shade. On a lovely hot day, looking out at the nice sunny view. Uh, Roof says the tan is coming on nicely. Very good. The boys are like that. They just run around. Love, love, love the sun. Christine loves the sun, but not high humidity. That's right. It can be a bit um, intense, can't it? Uh, factor 50 all the way, Sylvia. That's it. <laughs> but there's a, there was a bit of a divide here. Um... <laughs> Lynn says, I used to be a sun worshipper, but I've tempered it now. Oh, that's good. That sounds, that sounds good. Jill's with me. Shade, factor 50 and a hat. <laughs> Don't like it too hot. Yeah, 25 degrees. We actually, this last weekend, were up near your neck of the, the woods, um, uh, Roof Bowl. We were up uh, on, on the beach in the Wirral. And uh, we, we just thought we, we were seeing my brother, actually, who lives up north and his family. And we thought, well, why don't we go to the beach for the day? So we went over to the beach on, on the lovely uh, coast and it was just so hot. It was lovely. I bought myself a new hat. <laughs> that's, that's a mark of a good day out at the beach for me. <laughs> anyway, it's lovely to be together in this way. Why don't, why don't I pray and then let's um, sing praise to the Lord. Let's do that. Father God, thank you that we can come to worship you uh, wherever we are, uh, Lord, whatever our situation is, uh, Lord, let us be people who rejoice in you, in what you've done, in who you are. And uh, yeah, Lord, we commit this time to you. We pray that in the words of these songs, there might be an encouragement for our hearts. We might be able to rejoice um, because of all that you've done for us. As well as rejoicing in, in our situation right now, uh, Lord, would you make us people of praise uh, in this generation for your glory. Amen. I'm going to sing When Peace Like a River. When peace like a river attend my Sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, Thou hast told me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well.
been an encouragement to you uh, this last week. Maybe it's been a particular sermon that you've heard in your local church, or maybe there's been a, a book, Christian book that you're reading, or even just even a passage of scripture that's been an encouragement to you. Maybe there are things that you could share in this time. Uh, it's lovely to see on the Come and Sing With Me community group. If uh, if you're not a part of that, just search on Facebook. If you're on Facebook for Come and Sing With Me community, people sharing um words of encouragement and scriptures and prayer points and answered prayers on that time. And uh, this is a really good opportunity to be able to do that. You know, you could say there's this particular book that I've read and uh, it's been a real joy to me. Do, do make sure you make the most of those things. Shall 
call the trumpet sound Oh may I then in Him be found Dressed in His righteousness second verse are particularly poignant for some people at the minute when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil I think that can sometimes be our experience that that darkness that evil in this world can seem to kind of cloud out our view of the father sometimes we can see our, our kind of we need to put our gospel glasses back on to see things as he sees them let's sing that again when darkness seems when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high Gale. My anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, the cornerstone, weak and made strong, the Savior's love. sing a song now this was on our uh, hope for easter project it's been so encouraging just to hear how those uh, cds have gone out and been uh, given away evangelistically this last year i'm just so amazed with what the lord has enabled us to do uh, during this time that um, people who may have never heard uh, an easter message or a christmas message I've had that posted through their door or shared with them by a Christian friend. And so thank you to, to those of you who, who got behind that and shared those songs and uh, and uh, CDs. This song is called A Fountain from the Crucified. And it, it has that invitation, which I think is the invitation that we all get from, from God, which is come, come to the waters that will never run dry. Come to the waters that truly satisfy you know that kind of image of wanting to go and and drink from different wells in this life and there is one well that will never run dry there is one um there is one fountain which is is the one that really will satisfy us with the living water of christ a fountain from the crucified Songs of conquering love 
ourselves and find we are renewed. To give is to be satisfied, to love becomes our turn to God's Word. Um, it'd be great to spend a little bit of time looking into the Bible. I'm going to be in the book of 1 Peter this morning. Uh, it might be that we hang out in 1 Peter for a little while on Tuesdays um, whilst we're doing these sessions. Um, it's great to uh, be able to do that and spend time here. I don't think I've got anything particularly announcements-wise to, to say. We're gearing up for um, the Keswick Convention, which will be happening um, in uh, July, actually week one of that. Uh, I'm, I'm leading with uh, Colin Webster, my good friend and colleague, and we'll be doing that. We've got a little concert halfway through the week as well, which looking forward to that. And then the second week will be... Um, Ben Slee, our friend, who'll be leading the music for that. And then week three, somebody called Ollie Knight. You heard of him? Don't know? Yeah, our friend Ollie will be leading the music for that as well. So we're really looking forward to a physical event and we're praying that we'll be able to sing. I think that's the real... I'd, I'd love you to join with me in, in praying for the church. I know that if you're in Scotland now, you're, you'll be able to sing, I think, in most areas uh, in uh, in Scotland, in, in churches, but with behind masks and things. But uh, we're longing to be able to sing and as God's people, and uh, I think that'll be a really special time if we were able to do that. It will be live streamed uh, for free and everything as well, so you'll be able to catch it, and we'll share links and things if you if you're not able to be there in person. But uh, do pray for us in the preparations for that, as we as we gear up for that, both musically and also spiritually preparing for that time. <clears throat> one Peter chapter one, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To God's elect, strangers in the world scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, (coughs) Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. (coughs) Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. 
It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of the things that have been told by those who have preached the gospel to you, by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. <clears throat> well, you know, it's just wonderful to read of the living hope that we have been bought, that we have been brought into this new birth, into this living hope in Jesus Christ. And um, I think there's just so much in this passage which we could possibly kind of think about. But, you know, I wanted to think about how solid, how dependable, how um, uh, indestructible that hope is. You know, even in the face of trials, we have a hope that is sure, which is steadfast. We have a hope that will is of greater worth than gold, which 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 doesn't perish. And this is the kind of prayer that that Peter has for us in this passage: is that that our hope might be proved genuine, our hope might be refined, our hope might be proved to be uh, sure and steadfast and true in our lives. It says there in verse 10, Concerning the salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. I think that's what's saying that everything before Christ in the Old Testament, we can sometimes think, you know, what will happen to the guys in the Old Testament before Jesus? Well, they they lived by faith, didn't they? And they trusted by faith and, and uh, they longed for the coming Messiah. And Christ was the fulfillment of that promise, even if, if, if it looked different maybe than what they were expecting. You know, they might have been expecting a kind of military hero or somebody who was coming um, to kind of physically defeat the battles that were the occupying Roman forces or whatever it might have been. But, you know, Jesus had a greater purpose. He came to conquer sin and death, the greatest battle of them all. He came to 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 bring about peace between God and man so that we're able to have life with him. It says in verse 12, It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of the things that have now been told by those who have preached the gospel to you, by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look in to these things. And you know, one of the things that I think about often is this kind of chain that we have, you know, from the apostles, from Christ 2,000 years ago, we have this kind of chain, interlinking chain, which goes down through the generations. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting for you to trace back on your spiritual journey you know, who was it that, that told you, taught you, pointed you to Christ, a family member or uh, maybe a, a, a youth leader or a children's uh, leader, a Sunday school teacher at, at church or a, a teacher at school, somebody who, who just pointed you to Jesus? And what was the link in the chain before them? I think particularly for those of us, you know, for all of us, but maybe for those of us who haven't grown up in Christian families and you think about that and you think, well, that is, you know, it, it's seemingly random. But, you know, under the, the sovereignty and the providence of God, nothing is random. Everything has got a plan and a purpose. And, uh, you know, we as well, as we go back with all those links in the chain, thinking about between us and between the apostles and those who first taught the, the gospel and pointed us to Christ back then, we are also but a link in the chain. Uh, in, in maybe somebody else's story, who can you point to Christ and you know I, I, we, we often think about the kind of evangelistic edge and how can how can we make the most of the opportunities we have but it's the greatest privilege that we have in this life isn't it that we can hold out the word of life to others we can point them to him and we can um, we can show them Jesus let me pray and then I, I might just quickly do a little song just because it's been a little while since we've sung so I want to to do that Father, we just pray that you would help us to see our place as a link in the chain. A link in the chain of of, of those around us, maybe, maybe those who are yet to put their trust in you. How we can help them, point them to you, for your glory. Amen. <laughs> Is my reward and all.
God bless you folks. Have a wonderful day. And uh, whatever you're up to, enjoy the sun. Take care. See you soon. God bless. Singing how marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be. How wonderful is my Savior's love
beautiful and my song shall ever be oh how marvelous how wonderful is my savior